The next website is up. There was, as, as many of you got an email, there was a problem in assigning the bonus points. So I hope most of you realize that if you did the homework early, you got bonus points, and if you did it on time, you just got regular points. Unfortunately, uh, for some people, they were getting bonus points even if they did it two minutes before it was due. I mean, that was fortunate for them, but it seemed unfair to the people who were not getting it. So for the first three assignments, I gave everybody the bonus points whether you did it, as long as you did it in time. Um, but that means that we can't really do the bonus points anymore because it doesn't work. It's, you know, about 20% of the students were getting extra bonus points, which wasn't fair to the other eight. So, so everybody got half again the number of points for the first three assignments, but then we're done with that. Um, the paper homework number three uh, is not quite up on the website yet because I had to change it because we're a little behind schedule. Um, but it will be up, but it won't be due until after Rosh Hashanah because most of you don't have recitation. You only have one recitation next week because there's no class on Thursday and Friday. Uh, so it'll be due the Monday. And then, of course, there's this midterm thing, which is two weeks from yesterday at 8.30. It will not be in this room. Um, most people will be in urban space, but one recitation, I think, uh, Yes, Lady Shah's recitation will be in old engineering. I think that's recitation seven? I don't know. Anybody know? No, 8.30 p.m., but what recitation? Nobody in here is in Shah's recitation? Yeah. Is that seven? Number seven? You don't know. The one she's in. She's in your recitation. You probably will not be in the essay. But I'll write this down, it'll be on the website soon. Okay, so what we did last time, if you remember, and where I'm picking up from, is we had this uh, so we have an integral that you, for whatever reason, cannot or don't want to calculate the actual formula for, a lot of integrals are that way. I gave several examples. Um, and so you want to do this numerically. And really, we have three methods of choice. There are more, but we have the trapezoid rule. We have the midpoint. And we have Simpson's method. I don't know why one's a rule and one's a method, but okay. Oh, it's a rule. Let's not even give them not even give them methods or we have trapezoid, midpoint, and Simpsons. And I went through this last time. The trapezoid, the trapezoid, you fit things like this. That's supposed to go under. Oh well. You fit trapezoids underneath and you add up their areas. Uh, the midpoint. You fit rectangles underneath. Rectangles they don't go underneath, they go through their middles. Come on. Like that. And then Simpsons, which I can't draw very well, you go through three points per thing, and you put little parabolic guys on top. There's a formula for them. The trapezoid one, you evaluate here and here, the heights, and you average. Here and here, the heights, and you average. The midpoint, you average, and you, you, you evaluate in the middles. And Simpsons, you take one of these, four of these, and two of these, and you add them up in that way. Um, if you look at the formula, so let's call this Tn, Mn, and this one is S, and I'm going to call it S2n because of this issue that, 
well, just I will. Um, we use sort of more points, depends on what you, what you put call in. Um, then, in fact, Simpson's rule, if you just look at the formulas that you get, which I didn't say last time, Simpson's is just a third of the trapezoid plus two thirds of the midpoint. I didn't clean enough room. Privacy. So if I calculate the midpoint method with five rectangles and the trapezoid method with five rectangles, and I take my answer and I take one third of, the of this one and two thirds of this one, then that would give me Simpson's uh, to the ten. That's backwards, isn't it? No, I think that's right. Isn't that backwards? Maybe Simpsons with fewer. Does anybody have a clue what I'm talking about? Okay, well then you should have stopped me like 10 minutes ago. Um, Alright, so this you understand, right? I don't need to review this again. Yes? You don't understand. Okay. Well, if you shake your head, it means no. So. Unless, unless we're in India, and then it means yes. Yeah. Um, all right. So, okay. So, I think that's right. Anyway, if you just look at this, you see if I take this guy and I take one third of the answer that I get from this rectangle, and I take two thirds of what I get by just evaluating at the middle, then that should give me something about this, this, and this. But the numbering here is a little bit funny because the way we use the number n does not count the number of rectangles, it counts the number of points for Simpsons. So this is right. Okay. Does anyone need me to write down the formula again? Yes. Yes. Just figure them out, they're easy. Uh, okay. So, the trapezoid with n is, so we take the width of the little interval, so I'm integrating from b to a to b. So I take the width of each little in, uh, rectangle that I take, and then I want to average, so I pick my n points going, it's really n plus 1 because I start at 0, and I evaluate my function at the first point, at the second point, and at the last point. So here I have n plus 1 points. This is the heights on the rights and the lefts of each rectangle. And I'm going to average them, so I have to divide by 2. And I'm sorry, I take twice those. All the guys from the middle. Right? The reason they're double is because when I have a trapezoid like this sitting next to a trapezoid like this, this guy, whose height is f of x1, gets counted twice. So I get a 2 for everybody in the middle because you count it from the right, you count it from the left. In the midpoint, again, take the width of my rectangles, and now I just take the heights, uh, let me call them m's instead of x's. So in this picture, I'm not going to have room for Simpsons. Here I have xn, or not n. I have my interval, 
I chop it up into a bunch of rectangles, and I call this side x0, x1, x2, until I'm done, xn, like that. And I'm going to call m1, m2, m3, mn, the midpoints of those rectangles. So, okay. And then the heights over it are plug this into the function. The midpoint formula is just take the width of each rectangle, this distance here, is b minus a over n. It's a really terrible brace. b minus a over n. That's the width of each guy. For trapezoid, I have to average for midpoint, I just evaluate. But the thing that's annoying about midpoint is I've got to, the numbers are ickier because I have to divide by find midpoints. And then for Simpsons, which I didn't leave room for, uh, right here. for Simpsons, oh, I'll move over. I'm going to use that same notation. And so, and now, just do the convention, if I have, so, no, this is SN. Then again, this is 2 sorry. Here, I have about N points, I'm going to use exactly the same points, and what I want to take is the width here, and then I'm going to average these two things in sort of a funny way. So I'm going to take the function at, 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 the, at the extreme right side, this side, is that right? I don't know. Way over there, the lowest value, and then I'm going to take four of the midpoint. And then I'm going to take two of the left side, which is also a right side. And then I'm going to take four of the next midpoint. And then I'm going to take two of the next side. There's F's here. two of the next side, and so on. And then when I get to the end, I will be taking two of the last guy plus four of the last midpoint plus just one of the last point. And then this averaging that I'm doing, because I have sort of three points for each rectangle, instead of two points for each rectangle here, they're not rectangles, each interval, I divide by a third. Because when you average three numbers, you divide by three. When you average two numbers, you divide by two. And if you look at these formula, you can see that this guy is just, well, if I double the end, this guy is just that guy with fewer plus that guy. Uh, backwards. That was a lot of discussion for something not really very worthwhile. But, okay? Yeah? Do you want to use Q's or smiley faces or rabbits? Use whatever letter you happen to like. The, one, the reason that I switched from X's to M's is if you think about rectangles, if I think of this as a rectangle, I have a right side, a left side, and a middle. So I use right and left for X and M for middle. But if I'm thinking of twice as many points, these are all the same. Use whatever letters makes more sense to you. The, the, the process, so I will go through one more example of this. Yeah. 
So, the reason it's 4 and 2 and 4 and 2 and blah, 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 is because I want to count the middle more. You can, and I just should have done it, I really don't have time, is I want to find a parabola going through three points. When I'm finding a parabola going through three points, the middle counts more than the two sides. And that's why it's 4 and 2. The middle is twice as important as the two sides. And so, and because everything's double, that's why it's 4 and 2. But you could just, if I just solve the equation, I don't think it will help. So, and it'll take about 15 minutes, so I don't want to do it, because I'm already late. Okay? So it's just 4 and 2 and 4 and 2, and I'm sorry, that's not very important. Okay. That's not what I'm talking about today. Too bad. We have these bounds on the error yes. that tell us how good these approximations are, which I, of course, have not memorized, and you don't have to memorize. But the error, so let me just call it, no, I don't, yeah. So E sub T, which by that I mean the difference between the trapezoid and the actual value. So this is always less than uh, the width of the interval to the third divided by the number of points you're using squared, and I think this is the 12 for the trapezoid. That means that's how far off the trapezoid is. No more than that. It could be exact, but it's never more than, and there's a constant. Sorry. This constant is the maximum of the second derivative over the interval. I'll do an example of this in just a second. The error on the midpoint less than the same thing, e minus a q k over 24 n squared. And Simpson's rule is magic because Simpson's rule for twice as many evaluations, you go from a square to a fourth. So I'll just write it here. For Simpson's rule, this is less than b minus a to the fifth, and then this constant here, I used k, so I'm going to use m, over 180 n to the fourth, where here m is the maximum of the fourth derivative. Okay? So, what does this mean? Now I'm going to do an example. <coughs> so suppose, let me do an example with Simpsons, because that's maybe the most complicated. And rather than doing some integral I can't do, let's do something I can do, but only with a four function. I'm going to do it sort of by hand. So suppose, for some reason, I don't know why, you only have a four function calculator, or you can only multiply, and you want to calculate the log of two. How good should I want? Three places? Four places? Should I do log of three instead? Let's do log of three. Doesn't does anyone know the log of 2? Is anyone here? <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> 
So I can only use addition, multiplication, and division. I guess I can subtract if I need to, but that's really addition. And I want to calculate the log of two to three places. What do I do? Nobody knows? It's impossible? I take out my calculator? Yeah. Right, one and two. If I integrate, it's zero left, I get above. So, I know that if the integral from one to two of one over x dx is the natural log of x evaluated from one to two, which is the log of two minus the log of one. And one of the things that you're supposed to know is that the log of one is zero. So that's the log of 2. So that's nice. I know that the logarithm is the integral of 1 over x, and so now I have a formula. But I only get to use addition, multiplication, and division because the log button on my calculator broke. And so, or I was thrown back in a time machine, and it's the 17th century, and we need to calculate logarithms because Isaac Newton asked me, and you know, what do we do? Um, okay, so, so now we can do this. Now I want it good to three places. <clears throat> so I'm going to use Simpson's rule because it's really the most efficient. I don't want to do too many multiplications and divisions. So I know Simpson's rule is going to be the least amount of work for me. So what do I do next? How do I know whether I use n equals 5, or no, n equals 10, or n equals 100, or n equals 4? How can I know? All the required information is on the board. So what do I do next? You graph. Um, one over Draw the graph, okay. Here's the graph. 1 over x, I want to go from here to here, 1 to 2, I want that area. So I suppose I could cut out a lot of little pieces of paper and measure. Getting that to three places, probably I'd have to draw the graph exactly to about the scale of this room, and then measure, or I could use a micrometer, but I don't have a micrometer, so that's not going to help. Okay, so you had, someone started to tell me another, maybe I'll draw a bigger graph. So, what's next? The information is on the board. Everything you need. You just got to do some calculation. Yeah. Okay, so suppose I just picked a value for n. Pick a value. 10? 4? Okay. Suppose I pick a value for n and I do it. 4. I get an answer. I have to have it right, because if it's not right to three places, um, my aircraft will crash, my bridge will fall down, whatever it is I'm doing will not work. So I have to know it's right, but I don't know the answer. And I don't have a calculator that can tell me the answer. So I could just pick and hope beyond hope that I was lucky. I could pick n equals a thousand and sweat a lot, and then later only to learn that two would have been enough. And maybe a thousand wasn't enough. Maybe I needed ten thousand. Sorry? Somebody just said it. Use the error. Right. So I know already, right here, well, right here, from this formula, how to figure out how good it's going to be. I got to do some division and jump, but this formula tells me. So, lucky for me, A is 1, and B is 2. So b minus a to the fifth, so my error, my Simpson's error, is less than 2 minus 1 to the fifth power. Well, that's easy. There's a number m that I don't know yet. Uh, 180, I know what 180 is. And n to the fourth. And I want this error to be less than I want it good to three places, so I want this less than 
zero, so this is what I want. Zero point three places and then round. So one thing here is when I say good to three places, I want the third digit after the decimal point to be correct. That means that I can have a mistake in the fourth, des the fourth digit after the decimal point, but it can't be bigger than five. Because if it's bigger than five, I'll round the wrong way, and my, fourth, my third digit will be wrong. So I want my error to be less than 0005. Okay? Is everybody okay with that? So now I just need to figure out what n is, and then I have an equation for n. Okay, so what's m? Well, m is the maximum of the fourth derivative. Yeah. It's 180. I wrote 120 and then I checked and it was 180. I changed it at the very end of the class. It better be 180. Let me check again. So you may have noticed I'm not really very good with actual constants in 180. I have a very terrible memory for numbers. I'm actually not very good at adding and subtracting either, but... Okay, so here we are. I'm, I'm terrible at math. I'm actually pretty good at math. I'm bad at arithmetic. Okay, so here we are. So I have to figure out what m is. So m is the maximum of the fourth derivative. Well, that means I need to take some derivatives. So f of x is 1 over x. The first derivative is negative 1 over x squared. The second derivative is negative 2 over x cubed. The third derivative Uh, negative 6, no, it's positive now, over x to the 4th. No, oh, yeah, this one's positive. This one's negative. I don't care because I'm going to take the absolute value, but okay. And f to the 4th is positive again. It's 24 over x to the 5th. And now, so this is a function, but I want a number. And I want the number here that makes this the biggest. The graph is a little screwy looking. Let's see. I want the number between 1 and 2 that makes this the biggest in absolute value. So I want x to be 1, because it's 24 when x is 1, and it's 24 over 32 when x is 2. So 24 is bigger than 24 over 32. So that means I take m equal to 24. Now I can get a useful answer even if I can't figure out exactly what the maximum is as long as I take something bigger than it. So if I wanted, I could take m equal 100. And I would get something that would work, but maybe I'd do extra work. So I'm going to take m equal 24, but then when I do my calculation, I may change it. Okay. M is 24. And so now I need to solve I need to find an N so that 1 over 20, forget about the 1. 24 times 1 is usually 24. 24 over 180 n squared is less than 0 0.0005, which maybe I can write as 5 over 1. Thank you. That's a 4. Uh, 5 over 10,000. Is that right? That's right. So I need to solve that. So that's the same as saying n to the fourth is bigger than uh, 24 times 5 over 180 times something's wrong here, my 10,000 and my 5 are on the wrong side. 24, 1, 2, 3, is it 10,000? Yeah. Oh, I 
I see it in two places in my office. Okay, 24,180 times 5. Uh, okay, so uh, let's see. We can reduce this a little bit, I suppose. Uh, I don't know. So, of course, if we have a calculator, we can just calculate it. Are we in the 17th century or are we in the 21st century? We switch, we can go back and forth. Does somebody want to calculate this for me? No? Nobody has a calculator? So, if I, huh? 80 over 3. 80 over 3. So 80 over 3, this is about, well, so let's call that 90 over 3. So that's less, so this equals 80 over 3. This is 90 over 3, so I'm going to call that Wait, I went the wrong way. All right, 80 over 3, which is uh, 20, 30. What's 80 over 3? goes into 80 two times, and then 3 goes into 20, uh, 7 times-ish. So this is 16 and change. OK. Yeah, what are those numbers? <laughs> 26 and stuff. And so I need to find a number n whose fourth power is bigger than 26. Well, let's see. The fourth power of 2 is 16. No, 2 isn't going to work. The fourth power of 3 is 81. 3 works. I'm cool. So here I take n equals 3. Oh, but it needs to be even. But since we're going to do Simpson's method, I have to have an even number of rectangles, so I better use so I need n equals 4 because Simpson's rule doesn't work with an odd number of n. So that means two intervals is good enough for Simpson's rule to give me the log to five places. So that means I need to calculate with five points. So I need to take the inverse of five numbers, add them up, and stuff. So I might as well finish that. You completely blow the entire class. That's always good. So it's good because the other lecture, she's behind, and so now we're behind too. No, but I write the test so that I can do it without a calculator. And if I can do it without a calculator, you can for sure do it without a calculator. <laughs> so there's a lot of things that calculators are useful for, and I carefully choose the numbers so that you can do them without. Okay, so we do n equals 4. I might as well do n equals 4. So. So for Simpson's rule with 4, I'm going from A to B. That means the width of each of my rectangles is uh, 1 quarter. So I have a third times a quarter. And I'm going, remember, from 1 to 2. And I'm going to put, I'm going to find 4 points between 1 and 2. The first one is 1. The middle one is one and a half, which is called three halves. The last one is called two. And then the middle between one and three halves is uh, one and a quarter, which is, no, yes, five fourths. And the middle between three halves and two is seven fourths. Okay? So those are the points. Those are my x0, m1, x2, m2, and x. What? No, this is one and a half. This one is three fourths? Halfway between one and one and a half is not is not three fourths. Half of one and a half is three fourths. It's one and a fourth, which is five over four. Or if you prefer one plus one over four. 
and this is 1 plus 3 over 4. Yeah. Okay, so now we do the stuff. We add up the function evaluated here, that's easy, 1 over 1 is 1, plus 4 times the function evaluated here, so this is 4 fifths, because my function is flip it, plus twice the function evaluated here, plus 4 times the function evaluated here, plus just 1 of the function evaluated there. And so that gives me my approximation. And let me not do the arithmetic because I'll blow it. Yeah. Because my function is 1 over x. So if you prefer, let me just add another line. So this is 1 twelfth of 1 plus 4 times 4 fifths plus 2 times 2 thirds plus 4 times 4 sevenths plus a half. Because my function is 1 over x. Where did you go? There you go. So my function is 1 over x. So that's right. And then this is some number. Same thing if I ask the question in traps it. Right? You would not feel they could do this with, say, trapezoid or It's the same process, but you only need the second group. So my constant k for trapezoid or midpoint is 2. But I'm only taking a square root instead of a fourth root. So it's a bigger number. Okay. It's something like 1. Some number like that. Maybe it's four. Okay, so let me um, okay, so let me just start the next thing. So I'm going to ask a different question now, and I was all set up to do quick. But uh, so any questions about this? Are we good with this? Yeah. <laughs> Depends on what you want to count. So if you are counting the number of intervals. See, notice that in Simpson's rule, I have two things with parabolic tops, but I have four points. So it depends on who you talk to. So the book's author prefers to count the points. I think if you read the Wikipedia article, it prefers to count if it's not Wikipedia, it's some other one. Refers to count the number of intervals. And so in this case, if in this case, then I would get, I would call it two intervals for n equals four. The number of points for that number. Yes. That's what it, to change the formula, if n is the number of intervals, then instead of the third, it's a sixth out in front, and then you have more stuff in front. But okay. So, Depends on what you want to call it. Oh, shoot. So here, yeah, this is it, 2x. Yeah. This one was 2x. Yeah. Yeah, but that's a 
between the four. It's really a six. And the disc, if you think of it as the distance between the points, then it's b minus a over two n. So I'm putting two n points in there. In this case, the distance from here to here is one quarter. The distance from the first point to the next point, which happens to be a midpoint, is one quarter. So I divide by one quarter. Okay, let's move on. I'm not really sick of it. Say that once. 
That means if I had an infinitely long shape like that, I could always, and, and I need one gallon of paint to, to paint one, one square unit, I could paint it with one gallon, even if it's infinitely long, because it gets so skinny. So we can make sense of this. And it's not just e to the minus x that we can make sense of this for. We can make sense of this for other functions as well. So such a thing is called an improper integral. And maybe it's improper if you... Oh, I put bounds on it. Now it doesn't look like sex dx. It was improper if we do the other one too because it was just not polite. Um, okay, so we have this improper integral here. So an improper integral means that it's infinite in this. So in general, we can make sense of this notion of improper integral if one of the bounds is infinite. So in general, So we define the integral from any point to infinity to be the limit of the integrals as we do that. If we take the limit as the upper bound goes to infinity, if it exists. If it doesn't exist, that limit doesn't exist. So, for example, the integral from 0 to 1, of, uh, 0 to infinity of x, well, it's bad there. Let's go from 1 to infinity. The limit, the integral from 1 to infinity of x dx, this limit doesn't exist. becomes infinite. So we would say that this diverges. And we would say this one, if it exists, it converges. This word diverge and converge, we're going to use a lot in this class. And you should get used to these terms now because in about three weeks we'll be using them a lot more. So if a limit doesn't exist or is infinite, we say the integral diverges. Probably a good place to stop. So, we'll do more of this stuff on Monday. <laughs>